Hi everyone, I'm Yael Bala. She already introduced, introduced me so well, so I can only say that in two days I'm going for a two months vacation to see these amazing views. Uh, and uh, <laughs> so, but today we're going to talk about web uh, content caching. So what we are going to answer, to learn today, we are going to learn why to cache, which content we want to cache, and uh, where should we cache this content and how we control the caching. Before we start, I want to tell you a story. A few months back, we got an email from a customer asking to update their logo. Uh, so we just took the file, the new logo, uploaded it to S3, where all the static content is placed, and told him, it's fine, you can now see your new logo. Immediately, we got an email saying, I still see my old logo. Why did it happen? This is exactly what we're going to talk about today, how web content caching behaves, and how we can control this caching and avoid caching problems. Why do we need caching? Isn't that easier to just get the latest value all the time? Well, it's easier, but if we can uh, manage uh, caching properly, we can gain a lot of performance improvements. Even today, with all the fast Wi-Fi, code splitting, compression, we st it still takes time for web applications to load. And we can improve re uh, responsiveness when we use cache. We can also use cache in order to serve content offline and uh, manage ourselves during network interruptions. We can also save load on the original server. We don't care about that because we're in front-end conference, but uh, if we can, why not? Static resources are natural cand candidate for caching. Logos, images, media file, uh, all, all the scripts and CSS. But we can also store user data, uh, like latest articles or posts. We don't want to uh, store data that uh, will not be correct when it's old. For example, showing customer balance. If we display an old value, the customer might not be happy. We should also be careful with uh, caching HTML pages, because if the HTML page is stale, all the resources it points to will be stale as well. Uh, we also should be careful with serving sec uh, with caching secure content because we don't want it to reach the wrong person. Where can we cache? What are our cache options? For that, let's look on the request journey. Uh, when we issue a request for a web application, uh, we would expect it would just go to the original server and get the value back, right? The reality is more complex. We have several stops on the way that can cache our data. The first stop is the service worker. You uh, probably saw it. It's, I think it's by default on every Create React app. And uh, it can intercept all kinds of network requests and return back the data. Um, if the service worker can't return the content, then the browser cache takes into action. The browser maintain an HTTP cache. And if the content is fresh, I mean not expired, then it will serve the content from cache. And if not, it will go outside to the network. There is usually a CDN in place. And the CDN also maintains some kind of HTTP cache. And if the resource is in cache, that's great. And if not, we will go uh, all the way to the origin server. The origin server, when they return the content, they also return uh, an additional information. They return information about how to cache the resource and if you can cache the resource uh, using uh, different headers that we will see later on. So our first stop is the service worker cache. The service worker is just a script, just a JavaScript. It runs on the background outside of your application, and it can do many things, but uh, it can also intercept network requests and decide if to return the content from cache or not. Uh, there are 
uh, pre there, are, there are very common uh, strategies that you can use inside Service Worker. You don't even need to re-implement them. You can just import that from different libraries and use them. It can offers you all kinds of uh, ev everything you can think of. You can implement. Uh, you. Uh, for example, uh, network first, what does it mean? It means that I will try to go to the network, but if the server does not return the content, then I will tr take the latest value from cache. We can also use stale while revalidate, means that we will serve first the offline content, what we had last time, but immediately we'll issue a new request. And the request, um, uh, and when the request arrives, we will send back the information to the application to update the content for the user. The service worker can intercept any type of request, uh, as, I, uh, as I said, and the logic is controlled by you. But if the service worker can't return the data, then the next stop is the browser cache. The browser, uh, HTTP cache is just a built-in mechanism inside the browser. Uh, every time they lo it loads a web application, it also uh, stores the values in the cache. For, uh, if you look on the network tab, you can see which requests are loaded from outside and which requests are loaded from, uh, from disk. For example, here we see uh, a library that is loaded from disk, and you can see it was very, very fast. It was three milliseconds. The browser cache and the service worker cache, they save the same purpose, to avoid network calls and take the data from the uh, local machine. Uh, the difference is that the service worker offer the developers uh, more fine-grained control. You can do whatever you want, but the browser cache is very limited and it can also only cache a specific type of content, which is the static web application content. Using HTTP, relying on the browser HTTP caching means that we're actually uh, uh, using the server in order to tell us how to cache this resource and for how long. The server, you, uh, the origin server that returns the contents also returns re HTTP response headers to tell the browser how long it should cache the resource. The two main headers that are in use are cache control header and an e-tag header. The cache control header help us understand uh, if we can cache and for how long. We can have possible values like max age, which is the number of seconds this file can be stored on cache before it expired. We can also uh, specify in the header no store means no one can store this file at all, or no cache or must revalidate, which means that uh, we can store it in cache, but we must ask the server first if it's still valid before using the value. For example, here we have a library that was loaded from disk, and you can see why. The cache control header that was returned from the backend server contained the last, the, the max possible value for, uh, ca for HTTP caching, which is one year. You can see that the URL itself actually contained uh, a version. What does it mean? It means that the content of this file will never change. Everyone can safely store this in the, uh, in the cache every stop on the way, because every time we will go to the server, it will always return the same value. And this is a very common uh, behavior, and it's definitely the recommended one for libraries or any other scripts that we have. The next, uh, the next header that help us to, uh, to control cache is the e-tag header. The original server can return back with the content uh, a tag, which is just an ID that represents uh, uh, the content version. And if the content is expired in cache, it means the max age, for example, uh, was, or, was already passed. Then uh, the uh, HTTP cache uh, in the browser 
will also set, will request the resource again from the original server, but it will also send the e-tag header in the request. And then the server can check the e-tag, compare it, and if the data was not modified, it can return the 304 HTTP response saying you can use the data in cache. It was not modified. But it can also send, it can also send the new content when it is, when it was updated with a new e-tag. So here we can see an example uh, in case that the browser was not sure they can use the value in the cache. So they sent a request to receive this file and uh, together with the e-tag and the server returned 304, no problem, you can use the data in cache. If the browser cache can't return the value, it means we need to go outside to the network and it brings us to the CDN. The CDN is a content delivery network. It's actually a set of proxy servers located in different places around the globe. And each one of them actually maintains a cache of the resources. So then when a user will ask, will try, will ask for a certain URL, it will be served from a computer which is nearby. And this will save the network delay. The, the proxy servers in the CDN actually maintain the same HTTP cache similar to the browser. So they also look on the cache control header and the e-tag header. But you can specify different values for the CDN. For example, you can specify X max H in order to control the amount of time this content considered fresh in the CDN edge. And you can also specify private or public. Private means this content can't be served in any intermediary server. It can only be cached inside a local machine uh, of the user uh, by the browser. And it and public means it can store it everywhere, whenever uh, who, whoever wants to access, to store this content. Another important tool we have in CDN is invalidation. We can issue a request uh, to clear the content from the CDN edge. It's not possible for us on the browser, right? If uh, in the example I said before, if I want to have a customer and they have some kind of old information on their browser cache, I need to tell them to clear their cache. But in CDN, I can initiate this request and it will propagate the whole uh, uh, network servers and clear the cache. So let's look on example scenario uh, for loading a web application. We have an index HTML, we have static resources, and we have user data. We also have three stops on the way. A service worker cache, HTTP cache, and browser HTTP cache, and the CDN cache. For the index HTML, we want it to be up to always up to date. It's also a very small resource. So we will uh, in the service worker we can implement a network first strategy. It means we will try to go to the network, but if the data does not return, we will use the latest value in order to show something. On the browser, we will specify a very low or even zero max age. We don't want to cache it. We want to always try to take the latest one. On the CDN cache, it's different. We can specify the max age, so it will be stored in the CDN all the time, because every time we deploy a new version of our web application, we can run in validation and actually make sure that the index HTML uh, will always have the most up-to-date version inside in the, uh, the CDN edge. What about our static resources, uh, CSS, JavaScript, things like that? For uh, this, we would like to use the same mechanism I showed before to make it immutable. It means that every time we change the content, we want to change also the URL. We can add some kind of random value or version to our files, and by that, we can maximize uh, the caching. We can specify the max age and the S max age to be one year. 
For the user data, the user data uh, should be stored on the uh, on the local machine and not on the intermediate caches. So uh, uh, we should use the service worker for that, and we can use the uh, uh, stale while validate um, uh, caching strategy because uh, again depends on which user data. But for most cases, we can show him what we received last time while also showing him we're refreshing it and trying to get the newest data for, for the user. So to summarize, uh, caching can help us speed performance and work offline. There are different types of caching in the request journey. And we, can, we have a different mechanism to control the cache. Uh, you can use different caching policies in the service worker. We can use CDN invalidations. And uh, the most important one is the cache control header when we where we can specify the max age for each resource or even if to store it or not. And if there is a tech away, one thing you need to do, refresh your app, open the network tab, look on the request, check what is loaded from disk, what is actually mutable, what is, uh, uh, has uh, maybe a wrong uh, headers, cache control headers, values, uh, and how you can use that in order to speed your application performance. That's it. Thank you, everyone. Yeah.